Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next guest has been described in England as a national treasure, and he certainly is. He's a writer of a large number of books. He's a comedian. He's a jazz trumpet player. He was a soldier in his day, fought for king and country and empire when the going was rough. So he did. And he's an ex-goon. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Spike Milligan? Spike has just published War Biography, Volume 5, <laughs> and it's called Where Have All the Bullets Gone? <laughs> Why such a title, Spike? Well, uh, I got wounded uh, during the war, and they took me back to a hospital. And when I came to, it was all lovely and quiet, and this stuff wasn't flying around. <laughs> and next to me was a Scots guardsman who'd been wounded as well. And he said, here, Jimmy, <laughs> where have all the bullets gone? <laughs> I never forgot that, so I thought it was a funny title. And, and, uh, 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 <laughs> somebody's got to laugh. At <laughs> and, and why you, were you, you in this laugh. camp, Spike? What's why that? were you What's brought? That? Sorry, why, why were you brought Still back to this camp? Still doing the same old job. The, the same old job. Yes. Right. <laughs> Aren't I terrible to him? Yeah. I'll be nice. No, no, I'll be nice. Okay, come on, all right now. Why were you brought back to this camp at this time? What year are we talking about now? 1940. 19, uh, 1944. Oh, I see. 44, sir. Yes. Yes. And why were you brought back to this camp and...? Uh, I was... I was bomb-happy. I... Come and... <laughs> Have you seen One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Yes. <laughs> well, this was like 500 of them, you know. <laughs> They're all like this. Uh... <laughs> and I was one of them, and they, we all, they didn't know what to do with us, because we were all strange, you know what I mean? Guys were lying under... In the hospital I was in, yeah. one guy was winding up his bed every night, going... <laughs> 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 It was, uh, seemed funny at the time. I suppose it was very sad. Yeah. And, and were you in shock, Spike? Were oh, you yes. Sick? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm gradually coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but how bad were you and how bad were the other fellows? Well, we were all very badly, yes, we were badly, we were all shell-shocked. They called battle fatigue. Yes. That means that you're fed up with fighting. <laughs> and I was really bloody fed up with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd had enough of it. Yes. And uh, so they put us in this camp and they gave you all tranquilizers. They were early days of tranquilizers. Yes. And you went around like zombies, do they? <laughs> <laughs> How long were you there? I was about five foot eleven. <laughs> <laughs> now, Spike, you keep on saying that, that you're Irish. Irish. Yes, yes, I am Irish. I've got an Irish really? passport. Have you? Yes. Still? Yes. yes. You told me that years yes. ago, and I didn't believe you, but just allow me. My real name is O'Mela Goyne. <laughs> That's my real name. Get off. Get off what? And, and what I'll does never be on the stuff. What are you talking about? <laughs> what does O'Mayla Coin mean? Get off that stuff. I'll be all right. <laughs> what does O'Mayla Coin mean? It means the small bald one. <laughs> what can I do about it? It's the truth. It's the truth, I tell you. You must believe me. Who are these people? What are they doing? And, and, and was your father a small bald man? Are they all man? homeless? What, my, what, was, was your father a small bald man? He was bald, yes. Yes. He went bald, yes. <laughs> And he, he wore a wig all his life. And I used to wonder why I always used to listen out for gale warnings. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so what did he do if he got a gale warning? We used to put extra glue in. Extra glue in. <laughs> yeah. And was he a happy man, Spike? He's a very strange man, yes. He told he was very, very Irish. And he told lies all the time, you know. <laughs> he told me, he said. I, I was shot by a Turkish sniper, he said. That's how I went bald. He said, and the bullet travelled round the inside of me skin, round the back of me head here, and come out above me here, all here. And I thought this, this was a true story. And he said, don't forget you're descended from the Kings of Ireland. So I thought, King of Ireland, that's so great. So I said, when I went to school, I said, I'm the King of Ireland. I had the Jesus beaten out of me. So I soon stopped being the King of Ireland. <laughs> And was he a romantic man, Spike? Oh, yes, very, very romantic. And he uh, suffered with hemorrhoids. That was the thing that... <laughs> <laughs> Both ends were wrong. And he, had, he used to say, what a terrible curse it is to have the piles. Because <laughs> there used to be piles in those days, you know. 
but I had to go in metric then. <laughs> <laughs> so what did he do about them? But he, he used to say that Chopin could never have written the nocturnes if he had piles. <laughs> I don't know, that's the kind of man he was. Now do you want to ask him questions? <laughs> but he, he was never... Why did he go to Australia then? Was it because of the piles? He saw... He saw... <laughs> no, you don't go to Australia because you've got... <laughs> Well, the people, to... people would be rushing out there to get the cure now. <laughs> now, he saw his first Pakistani bus conductor. And he was in the Indian Army during, during his early service yes. days, and he always thought the Indians were inferior. Yes. So he said to my mother, he got off the bus, came back and said, we're going to a white man's country. <laughs> and he went to Australia. He's an absolute fascist. Yes. He was a fascist. Uh, he is dead now, long since. Of well, I hope so. They buried him. He can't be very pleased if he isn't. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sing you San Francisco. Over here? Yes. Why not? You won't play the trumpet. You won't play the trumpet. That's Dick, and that's Spike. A flat, you... You don't want this. No. You don't want this. I have my heart in San Francisco. I left my knees <laughs> back in Peru. I left my little wooden leg somewhere in Winnipeg. I left my wig in Dublin Zoo on you. I left my teeth on Table Mountain high on a hill. They smile at me <laughs> when I go back again to San Francisco. There won't be much left of me to see. I know that Spike Milligan, down through the years, was very fond of The Late Late Show, and we loved having him as a guest. But as anyone who ever had anything to do with Spike will tell you, his mood could change very, very rapidly. So that when you invited Spike to the show, you didn't quite know which Spike you were going to get. Because he could swing from being extrovert and funny and delightful and, 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 and full of the joys of life to being somebody in a very, very bad mood. But when he was in good mood, he really was lovely. It ends with magic, Spike. It ends yes. with magic. Your daddy, tell me about him. Why did he have an obsession about Robinson Crusoe, Spike? He's a very solitary man. He was born in Sligo, where people were very far and few between. <laughs> and uh, he said there were two things in life he could do without, were neighbours and piles. <laughs> he was a sort of very strange man. I mean, uh, he woke me up at three one morning and said, wake up. What, what is it? He said, I've never shot a tiger. <laughs> so I said, just, why tell me? So I've got to tell somebody. <laughs> was that it? That was it, yes. <laughs> Isn't that enough? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he came from Sligo. Yes. And there's lovely stories from Sligo. It used to be quite a populous cattle town. It's a very small, dying town now. What, Sligo is? Yes. yes. You're joking. Well, it's been revived by artificial means. <laughs> <laughs> and he said that there used to be a booze there called the Henry. Yes. It was King Henry, a brilliant Henry. And a sailor came ashore with a magnificent coloured parrot on its shoulder. It's drunk, of course. And the barman was stunned at this apparition of this parrot. So he said, where did you get him? And the parrot said, oh, the streets, they're full of them. <laughs> <laughs> did you love him, Spike? Your He's dad. a great man, yes. Great character, yes. The last time you were up. Oh, well done. Somebody with tin knickers over there. <laughs> Good boy. Oh. Did you get it? 
uh, we're sharp tonight, are we not? We're, we're sharp. explaining that to you. <laughs> <over there. laughs> um, you are unique in every way, Spike. Believe me, you are. All this groveling will get you nowhere. <laughs> I'm not going to reduce the fee. <laughs> When you say you were, uh, you were a very gentle chap, and, yes. and, and you know you were very upset when you had to go into the army. Uh, why did you go into the army, by the way? Why did you join, join the British Army? At, at they, 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 they beckoned me. They asked me to. Did they? And I thought it was discourteous to say no when everybody else was saying yes. <laughs> and then they came and collected you. And they said, go, go over there and kill Germans, they said. So I went up there and killed Germans. And did you kill Germans? Well, I suppose I must have, yes. How do you know? Well, I was pointing that way. <laughs> <laughs> A ridiculous question. <laughs> A ridiculous answer. I didn't know, Spike, that you ever actually picked up a gun and shot at somebody, you see. I thought you were behind the line somewhere. Well, well no, I was an OP signaller. That's, we were right up the front. Here comes the fellow with the box. To keep the light <laughs> <laughs> Does so, your mother know you're doing that kind of secret work? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we were attacked sometimes. We were in the, in the front line. Yes. And, uh, and the, these Germans used to come up in the moonlight, linked arms, singing Deutsches Uber Yes. So we, we used to shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing we could do. I tried talking to them. <laughs> did you love him, Spike? Your he's dad. a great man, yes. Great character, yes. Why did you love him? Did he well, he's, he's, he's a you? fantasist. He would tell incredible stories. I did him talking about choking tigers to death and shooting elephants and catching cobras barehanded. And when I grew up, I suddenly said to him, Dad, these stories you've been telling me all these years, they're, they're not true. He said, no. I said, what's the point of it? He said, what would you rather have, a boring truth or an exciting lie? <laughs> what, what was the most extraordinary question ever put to you by your children? Where? Daddy, where does the dark go when you turn the light on? <laughs> <clears throat> more fantastic story about children is that uh, the week before Christmas and my daughter Seale, Irish name, came running and crying. I said, what is it? Who is he? I'll make him, I'll make him marry you. And, uh, she said, Sean says, that's my son, he's yes. a monster. Yes. Looks like porridge on legs. <laughs> she said, Sean says there's no Father Christmas. I said, will you tell him there is a Father Christmas? <laughs> I've got the receipt. <laughs> so she, she went away quite happy. But on Christmas Eve, when my wife went upstairs to put the toys at the bottom of the bed, we found a note beside her bed. She was six. I think roughly the wording was, Dear Father Christmas, uh, my brother Sean doesn't believe in you, so when you come tonight, belt him. <laughs> P.S. There's a hammer under my bed. <laughs> but I thought the three pens in the top pocket, Spike, might have been a little excessive, perhaps. Uh, excessive for what? Excessive for pens? Ex yes. You're right, these are excessive pens. <laughs> I went into a shop and I said, can I buy three excessive <laughs> pens, please? And the guy showed me these excessive pens. He said, they look excessively good. <laughs> you can't win. Come on, he said. We promised your darling wife, Sheila, long, this is the long-suffering Sheila, uh, that we'd have you out by 10. It's now two minutes past. You're going for a meal. Well, I'm going to the Celtic News. I don't mind publicising it because it's a wonderful place. And serves Dublin Bay prawns. God, that's cast a spell over the audience. No, we're just thinking of Dublin Bay. <laughs> <laughs> but don't.